from the Eagle and S Softball Park in Tatum, Texas. Welcome to today's broadcast of Kilgore College Softball on the KC Sports Network. Our platform for our broadcast today is the Kilgore College YouTube channel. My name is Manny Almanza. Very happy to be with you in Tatum today as the Kilgore College Rangers are playing Trinity Valley Community College, currently in third place in the Region 14 North Division standings. The Rangers will be setting to the circle to open up game number one of this doubleheader, Kaylee Schmitz. Schmitz took the loss in game one of the doubleheader to Paris Junior College on Saturday. Here's the first pitch of the ball game by Kaylee Schmitz, and that will come straight across the plate for a strike. Mariah DeBose, the center fielder, is the leadoff hitter for Trinity Valley Community College. DeBose hitting for the left-hand side for TVCC. It's a red and blue game here. We'll talk more about that in a second as the pitch is right across the plate. And the count is quickly 0-2 to Mariah DeBose. Trinity Valley, if you're listening and unable to watch at this time, is wearing the red uniforms, red jerseys, red pants. Kilgore College in all blue today, the blue jerseys with the blue pants and a swing and a miss by DeBose. And that is the first out of the ball game. DeBose goes down on strikes, so right away on three pitches, DeBose is out. Good start for Kaylee Schmitz. Next up, it will be Crystal Castaneda. Crystal Ann Castaneda is the left fielder for Trinity Valley Community College. She will hit from the right-hand side. You'll hear the wind gust up once in a while here in Tatum this afternoon. Here's the pitch by Schmitz, and that will miss outside. So 1-0 the count to Crystal Castaneda. This game was scheduled for yesterday at the ballpark at KC Commons, but due to the abundance of rain we received Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the East Texas area, the field unplayable, and to, due to the graciousness of the folks at Tatum High School, uh, the game is now here at the Eagles Nest, which, as you can imagine, is a beautiful ballpark here. It is an artificial turf stadium or a sports turf stadium here in Tatum. Pitch missing outside, and the count will go to three balls and no strikes to Castaneda. So Mariah DeBose struck out on three pitches for Trinity Valley to start things off, and now Schmitz is in the hole 3-0 and to Crystal and Castaneda. Schmitz, a right-handed pitcher, the wind of the delivery, and that will be slow ball four. So it's a one-out walk to Crystal Castaneda. So she's aboard the first base runner of the ball game, and now up for Trinity Valley. It's the second baseman, Addison Wittram. Let's go ahead and give you the batting order for Trinity Valley Community College. It's Mariah DeBose, the center fielder, led off. Batting second, the left fielder, Crystal Castaneda, and hitting in the third spot, the second baseman, Addison Whitram. Here's the first pitch, and that one is going to be a strike call on the outside part of the plate. 0 1 the count to Whitram. In the cleanup spot, the first baseman, Kiara Wiedenhaupt. The number five hitter is Jaden Burnham, the catcher, followed by the shortstop, Destiny Menchaca. Hitting number seven, the designated player, Allison Garcia. In the eight hole, it's Eliza Fields, the right fielder. Here's the next pitch by Schmitz. It's going to be a bunt in front of the plate, scooped up by McClellan, and everybody will be safe. The number nine hitter will be Ashlyn Weinert, the third baseman, and the starting pitcher for Trinity Valley is Nicole Sturr. So Addison Whitram with a bunt single moves Crystal Castaneda over to second base. There's just one out in the inning, and Kiara Weidenhop, the first baseman, now comes up to the plate. The cleanup hitter hitting from the right-hand side. We'll set the Kilgore field for you as we can. The first pitch by Schmitz will be into the dirt. Moving on over to third, Hope Hampton, the catcher, unable to cut down Castaneda. So with that pitch, everybody moves up, and that will be a 1-0 count. Wild pitch will be charged to Schmitz. That one was in the dirt, a little bit hard to handle. So 1-0 the count. I say the dirt again. It is sports turf here at the Eagles Nest Softball Stadium. There is a shot to second. Oh, nicely done for the Rangers to get the out at first, but unable to turn the double play. That was a good stab by Haley Lamb at second, getting it over to Schumann at first. However, they do get the force out, but Castaneda scores from third, and Trinity Valley is on the scoreboard first with a one to nothing lead. Whitra moved on over to third, and we will have at the plate now for Trinity Valley, Jaden Burnham, the catcher. First pitch misses Whiten outside, and the count will be 1-0 and oh to Bertram. So Whedon Hop will end up being credited with the sacrifice on the putout 4-3. to three. Here's the next delivery on the way, and that one is a strike call. That beautiful off-speed pitch coming across the plate, and that'll make the count at 
One ball and one strike with two down in the top of the first inning. Just getting started. Actually, the scheduled game time was noon. Getting started a little bit early here in Tatum today, about 10 minutes early. And that's going to be a strike on a swing and a miss by Burden. So the count now goes to one ball and two strikes. There's two out in the top of the first inning. Trinity Valley already has a one to nothing lead over the Kilgore Rangers. Here's the next delivery on the way. Swing and a miss. And down goes Burnham, and that will retire the side. That's the second strikeout of the ball game in this first inning for Kaylee Schmitz. But Trinity Valley does push a run across in the top of the first inning. One run on one base hit for Trinity Valley. Also, you have the fact that the uh, walk was a big issue for TVCC. Also for uh, Kilgore College, no errors and one left on base. So run a hit, no errors, one left on base. And you have the one wild pitch that's tossed in there as well. We played half an inning, starting out here in the first game of a Region 14 doubleheader from Tatum. It's Trinity Valley 1 and Kilgore College coming to bat. This is Kilgore College softball brought to you on the KC Sports Network. Well, we do want to thank our sponsors for being with us for the broadcast today of Kilgore College softball on our Kilgore College YouTube channel. Of course, they've been with us for all of our sports broadcasts. All season long, including Azalea Orthopedics and Dr. Justin Bartley, Danton Delights Cafe, Patterson Chevrolet, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram of Kilgore, Energy Wealth Fab Incorporated, Austin Bank, and Mazio's Pizza. Thanking them for their support of Kilgore College Athletics. Let's give you the batting order for the Kilgore College Rangers as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Leading off for KC, it will be Riley Cornelson, the shortstop. Hitting second is the second baseman, Haley Lamb. The number three hitter will be the first baseman, Haley Shubin. Uh, Lamb and Shubin combining on that force out, or that put out, rather, in the first inning. Alyssa McClellan is the third baseman. She'll be hitting in the cleanup spot. The number five hitter for Kilgore is the catcher, Hope Hampton, followed by the designated player, Coletta Galvan. In the number seven spot for Kilgore College, it's left fielder, Cortland Goodson, followed by Corin Klimczak, the center fielder, hitting number eight. Here's a first pitch by Stuhr, and that's going to be a strike coming across the plate. Owen won the count to Cornelson as we're into the bottom of the first inning. So Corn Klimczak, the number eight hitter for Kilgore in the center field spot. The number nine hitter is Trinity Edwards, the right fielder. And as you know, Kilgore's pitcher is Kaylee Schmitz. And that's your order now for Kilgore College. So Cornelson has the count at one ball and one strike on her with Trinity Valley leading one to nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the next delivery. And that's going to be a shot by Cornelson. It'll go into right field and the squeeze is made. For out number one, making the catch, it's Eliza Field. So Cornelson flies out to right for the first out of the ball game, And now we'll see come to the plate Haley Lamb, the second baseman. Her family is here today uh, to follow her and take some videos of her batting as well. So Haley Lamb hitting for the right-hand side for Kilgore against Stewart. Here's the first pitch on the way by Stewart, and that one will go into the ground. And the count is at 1-0 and to Haley Lamb. Here's the wind and the delivery now, and that one will be a strike call, and your count is even up now at a ball and a strike. So Nicole Stewart, the starting pitcher, is a sophomore right-hander out of Keller, Texas for Trinity Valley. Here's the next delivery by Lamb. That's going to be a bouncer toward first. Easy scoop and a step to the bag for the second out by TVCC's first baseman, Kiara Weidenhaupt. So two up, two down. On the grounder to first, unassisted. And here is Haley Shubin, the first baseman. Shubin hitting for the right-hand side for KC as the Rangers try to scratch something out in the bottom of the first inning. Here's the wind and the delivery. And that one's going to be a ball. Missing inside. 1-0 um, oh the count. Again, we have the wind gusting. It's a windy day here in Tatum as the storms have cleared out from the last three days. And that one's going to miss as well. The count is at 2-0 and oh now. So 2-0, oh, the count to Shubin. Currently, sunny skies, 69 degrees. So much different of a uh, atmosphere than before as Shubin smacks it straight up the middle for a base hit. Ground ball single with two outs, putting Shubin aboard. And that's Kilgore's first base runner of the ball game. And here's Alyssa McClellan, the third baseman for the Rangers. So beautiful day here again in Tatum. It is a bit breezy, as we said, at this time. 
Winds are at 14 miles an hour coming from the southeast. And that pitch will come in to the next hitter for Kilgore College and Melissa McClellan, the third baseman. So McClellan, a sophomore, she's pretty versatile, has played first, has played third, has pitched for Kilgore as well. And that pitch will be a strike. And the count is now even at one ball and one strike to Alyssa McClellan. There is two down in the bottom of the first inning. The Rangers trailing Trinity Valley one to nothing. Here's the wind and the delivery. And that one will miss outside. And that will make the count two balls and one strike. So two and one the count now. Stewart's pitch on the way. And it's going to be fouled out of play over the first base dugout. That's where Trinity Valley is residing. Again, wearing all red today. It's red jerseys, red pants. The numbers on the back of the jerseys are in red, trimmed in white. Kilgore in all blue. Blue jerseys, blue pants, white trim on the blue pants. Kilgore on the front of the jersey and numerals as well. Touch of gray for the letters and numerals on Kilgore's jersey, trimmed in white. Three balls, two strikes now. The count to McClellan with two down in the bottom of the first inning and Schubins at first base for the Rangers. Here's the delivery, and McClellan will pop this one foul. It'll end up trailing out of play, hitting the roof of the dugout for Trinity Valley. So the count holds at three balls and two strikes. So there might be 14-mile-an-hour winds, and they'll gust higher than that, but... I think the players will take the fact that they get to play today. You don't want to cram too many games late into the conference schedule, and Rain can do that as McClellan will fly out to right field to end the inning as the catch is made for Trinity Valley by Eliza Field. So, no runs for the Rangers on one base hit, a single up the middle by Haley Schubin, no errors, and one left on base. We have played one complete inning from... Eagles Nest Softball Park in Tatum, and it's Trinity Valley 1 and Kilgore College nothing. We will go ahead and take this break as you are watching Kilgore College Softball exclusively on the internet on the Kilgore College Sports Network. One inning in the books from Eagles Nest Softball Park here in Tatum. Trinity Valley leading Kilgore one to nothing. This is game one of a twin bill here. Second game scheduled to start around 2 o'clock or at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes after game number one ends. And Trinity Valley, after getting a run across in the top of the first inning, will come to bat here in the top of the second inning. And leading things off for Trinity Valley, it will be Destiny Menchaca. The shortstop, first pitch to her is a ball, missing outside, 1-0 the count. So Menchaca at short, followed by Ellison Garcia, the designated player, and Eliza Fields, the right fielder. Here's the next wind and delivery by Schmitz, and it's going to be a pop that'll end up going foul, third base side. So the count will square away at one ball and one strike. Menchaca, transfer sophomore, coming out of McAllen, Texas. That's her hometown. Here's Kaylee Schmitz with the pitch, and that misses. Just a bit high on the off-speed pitch, making it two balls and one strike to Menchaca. Trinity Valley coached by Maria Wynn Ratliff, assisted by Kelsey Bernhard, Tony Segovia, and Luis Salas. Now the count goes to three balls and one strikes, one strike to Destiny Menchaca. Crowd starting to file in some now here at the Eagles Nest. 
early start and ball four and Manchaka will draw the walk. So she'll be at first base. That's the second walk issued by Schmitz. So now no off to plate for Trinity Valley. It's Allison Garcia, the designated player for the Cardinals. Here's the first pitch by Schmitz to Garcia. That misses high. So the count goes to 1-0. and oh. Trinity Valley at 11-3 and three in conference play, 32-12 and 12 overall. The Cardinals are in third place in the North Division standings, tied for first place after the weekend's action. Paris Junior College and Bossier Parish Community College, both teams with 12-2 and two conference records. Kilgore College sitting at 0-14 at the bottom of the North Division standings with an overall mark of two wins and 32 losses, a struggle. For the Rangers this season, turnover on the roster before and during the season for the Rangers. First year head coach Amber Williams trying to put the pieces together and build the program her way. Here's the next delivery and that one misses high and outside. And the count goes to two balls and one strike now to the hitter, Allison Garcia with Destiny Menchaca on first for Trinity Valley. Nobody out. Menchaca drawing the lead off walk. Here's the pitch on the way, and that one's going to miss low and inside, and that'll put the count at three balls and one strike again. Schmitz with a tough time taking the loss in game number one of the doubleheader to Paris on Saturday. Started game number two, gave up three runs, and there is a shot that'll be in between short and third and in a left field for the base hits. So station to station softball for Trinity Valley. Menchaca will go to second. Garcia picking up the hit will be at first base, and that brings up Eliza Fields. The right fielder, Schmitz only facing one batter, rather, excuse me, just getting one out in the top of the first inning in the Paris game, game number two of the doubleheader. Kilgore lost that one 10 to five. So Fields, the right fielder, up to bat with nobody out and two people on for the Cardinals. Here's the pitch by Schmitz. That's gonna be a button right in front of the plate. And Fields, oh, the ball throw goes wide. Fields is safe at first. Well, it looked like she was going to beat it out anyway, but now she's able to get the second and the error against Kilgore College. So Menchaca will score on the error on the throw to first base. Garcia moves all the way to third and all the way to second. It's Eliza Fields. So the Rangers are able to capitalize that time. Trinity Valley now has a two to nothing lead over Kilgore. Well, tough start for the Rangers this afternoon. There's a beautiful button lead down by Eliza Fields. That's the style that Maria Wynn Ratliff likes to play. She coached in Region 14 at Tyler Junior College as well. So up to the bat, it's Ashlyn Weiner, the third baseman, with two runners in scoring position for the Cardinals. Nobody out in the top of the second inning. First pitch misses outside and 1-0 and the count to Ashlyn Weiner. Schmitz takes a look at the wristband, and this is going to be a foul out of play. That'll even up the count now to ball and a strike. Looking at the flag in center field, the wind blowing outward. Again, when we last looked from the southeast at 14 miles an hour, here's the delivery. Swing and a miss. And that'll put the count at a ball and two strikes now to Ashlyn Weiner. There's nobody out in the top of the second. Trinity Valley with a two to nothing lead. And that's gonna be a swing and a foul tip back to the backstop. Not a whole lot of room between the plate and the backstop area here at Tatum, but again, beautiful facility. It's a sports turf field. And the fans have covering here. Here's the delivery, and that's going to be a pop-up into short right field. Edwards will camp underneath it and make the catch, tagging and coming home to score. With a slide, it is Allison Garcia, 
And Trinity Valley jumps out to a three to nothing lead over Kilgore. Liza Fields will move on over to third. And Weiner with a sacrifice fly to right field. That's the first out of the inning. Top of the order now for Trinity Valley. It's Mariah DeBose, the center fielder, struck out her first time up. DeBose wearing number four on the back of her jersey. Here's the delivery by Schmitz, and that's going to be a bunt that hangs in the air, bounces right in front of Schmitz, and she was caught in no man's land as the runner from third. Fields was charging home and then back to her act. And in the meantime, DeBose ends up going to first, and we'll give her an infield single on the bunt. So runners at the quarters now for Trinity Valley with one out. Cardinals with a three to nothing lead. Up to bat for Trinity Valley, Crystal Castaneda, the left fielder. Here's the wind and the delivery, and that one is low. And it'll be a steal attempt. Cardinals looked like they were going to try the double steal. But holding at third was Fields, and that froze the catcher Hope Hampton enough to allow DeBose to steal second base. So Castaneda up to bat now. In the meantime, was a strike call, 1-1 one, one the count, and there's a swing and a miss by Crystal Castaneda. And the count swells to no balls and two strikes with one down. Set the field for you for the Kilgore Rangers. After this pitch by Schmitz, that's a foul by Castaneda that ends up going out of play. So we have Schmitz in the circle behind the plate, Hope Hampton. At first base, Haley Schumann. The second baseman, Haley Lamb. Bradley Cornelson is the shortstop for Kilgore. And at third base, Alyssa McClellan. Left to right in the outfield for the Rangers, Cortland Goodson, Corn Klimzak, and Trinity Edwards. Here's the delivery, missing high and outside. The count is now one and two to Crystal Castaneda. Schmitz with the delivery. That's going to be a bouncer foul, third base side. The count holds it a ball in two strikes. Crystal Ann Castaneda, a sophomore from Magnolia, Texas, playing in Northeast Texas in Athens. Trinity Valley is ranked in the latest Division I softball rankings. There's a swing and a miss by Castaneda. So she strikes out, making it two down. And that is the third strikeout of the ball game for Kaylee Schmitz. Up to bat now for Trinity Valley, Addison Whitcham, the second baseman, hitting for the left-hand side. Eliza Fields at third, Mariah DeBose at second for Trinity Valley. The Cardinals have already played two runs in this inning. First pitch is straight across the plate for a strike. Beautiful pitch by Schmitz, 1-0 the count. Trinity Valley ranked number 18 in the latest NJCAA softball poll. Bossier Parish Community College of Region 14 is number 20 in the country. That's the next opponent for Kilgore College as the pitch misses low and outside, making it 1-1. One one. Bossier Parish will come to Kilgore on Saturday. That will be a doubleheader time of 1 o'clock for Game 1 and 3.30 for Game 2. It's the strikeout cancer games, and so come and join us for Kilgore College softball. Pitch is straight across the plate for a strike. The count goes to one and two now to Addison Whitrum. So those games again at the ballpark at Casey Commons at one o'clock and three o'clock. Strikeout cancer. Come and support the Kilgore College Rangers softball team and support those who have fought the battle with cancer. Pitch misses high, and the count is now even at two balls and two strikes. Two down in the inning. Two runs in. Trinity Valley three and Kilgore nothing. As Schmitz will twist the ball in her hand, come ahead with the delivery, and that's going to be a bounce at a second. Lamb picks it up, easy toss to Schubin, and that will retire the side as Whitman goes down 4-3. to three. But Trinity Valley plates a couple of more runs, two runs for TVCC, and the Cardinals end up doing it on two base hits. You can also factor in a walk and an error as well. Kilgore with one error and two runners left on base for Trinity Valley. We have played an inning and a half from Tatum, it's Trinity Valley 3 and Kilgore College nothing. We'll come back with more right after this on the KC Sports Network.
Kilgore College Softball of the KC Sports Network. Manny Almanza with you from Tatum as Kilgore trails Trinity Valley 3 to nothing, hitting to the last of the second inning. The catcher, Hope Hampton, will lead it off for Kilgore College. The first pitch by Nicole Sturr is into the ground. It is 1-0 the count to Hampton. Hampton will be followed by Coletta Galvan, the designated player, and Cortland Goodson, the left fielder. That's your three in the lineup. Here's the next pitch, and that one will come across the plate. And the count is even up at a ball and a strike. Here's the defensive setup for Trinity Valley. Stir is in the circle behind the plate, Jaden Burnham. At first base for TVCC, it's Kiara Wiedenhoff. Here's the next pitch, and that one will miss low and inside, but in the count at two and one. Second base, Addison Whitrum, the shortstop, Destiny Menchaca. And at third, Ashland Weinert. In left field, Crystal Ann Castaneda, the center fielder, Mariah DeBose. And the right fielder, Eliza Fields. And that's your defensive setup for Trinity Valley as the pitch misses outside. And the count is 3-1 and one now to Hope Hampton trying to get on base. Kilgore did have one base runner in the first inning, a single up the middle by Haley Schubin. But Sturr able to shut that down. Here's the delivery. And that one will miss inside ball four. And so the leadoff walk by Hope Hampton, and that's the first walk issued in the ball game. By Trinity Valley's Nicole Stir. 11 and 8 record, 3.48 ERA, according to our latest Region 14 statistics, has pitched 98 and two thirds innings coming into the ball game, giving up 103 hits and 70 runs. 49 of those runs were earned. She's appeared in 25 ball games and has started six, and that pitch will be fouled out of play. Owen won the count to Kilgore's Coletta Galvan, hitting for the right hand side. Stir has given up 15 home runs this season, has 74 strikeouts on the year. Here's the delivery to Galvan. She'll bunt this one, and it'll be an easy tag out at first. As the first baseman, Wiedenhaupt, was able to put the tag on Galvan. So she is out on uh, grounded at first unassisted. That ends up being a sacrifice bunt, however, as Hope Hampton Moves on over to second base. So one down for the Rangers, playing a little small ball, and Cortland Goodson, the left fielder, comes to bat, hitting for the left-hand side. Here's the pitch to Cortland, and that will miss outside. Win and know the count to Goodson. Here's the wind and the delivery. That one will miss low and outside as well, so the count goes to 2 and 0. Oh. Cortland Goodson hitting 0.95 for the Rangers. Has garnered six hits this season and 63 at bats, and that one will be fouled off the backstop. Two and one is a count now to Goodson. Has walked eight times and struck out 19 for the Rangers this year. Here's the delivery, and that one will... Miss low and outside, but in the count of three balls and one strike. The offering will be a strike call on the outside part of the plate, moving the count to full at three balls and two strikes. Cortland Goodson. No extra base hits this season, but however, she's able to draw the walk. Ball four, so Goodson with a good eye gets to first base. So the runners at first and second now for the Rangers. Hampton at second and Goodson at first with one down. Corn Klimczak, the center fielder, will come to bat for Kilgore College. Corn will hit from the right-hand side. Klimczak this season hitting 217 for the Rangers. Walking three times, striking out 20. She has four runs batted in for Kilgore College. Quick visit to the circle for Trinity Valley before Stoor gives up an offering here to Klimzak. First pitch on the way. That's a swing and a miss on a low offering. Owen won the count. Rangers trailing three to nothing. If you're just joining us, we're in the bottom of the second inning from Tatum. Here's the wind and the delivery showing bunt pulling back. Inside and high, count goes even at a ball and a strike to Klimzak. 
Well, the Rangers, with one down, have something cooking with a couple of runners on base. Let's see if Klimczak can turn the tide here for Kilgore. Here's the wind and the delivery, and that one will go into the ground, and that'll put the count to two balls and one strike. Broadcast sponsors for today's game include team physician Dr. Justin Bartley and Azalea Orthopedics as that pitch will be a strike. And the count goes even at two balls and two strikes. Also, Downtown Delights Cafe, Patterson Chevrolet Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Kilgore, Energy to Wealth Fab Incorporated, Austin Bank, and Mazio's Pizza. We do thank them for their support of Kilgore College Athletics. And that'll be a shot in the center field. Easy grab for the out. That'll be the second out of the inning. Nice job in center field by Mariah DeBose sticking with it. It was sinking kind of quickly, but DeBose is able to make the play for out number two. So Klimczak flying out to center. And that will bring up Trinity Edwards, the right fielder for the Rangers, with two runners on and two down, and Kilgore trailing by three. That pitch will be a ball, 1-0 the count. Store, the right-handed pitcher with the wind and the delivery, and that's going to be fouled, third base side. Bounces off the screen. Count goes even at one and one. Trinity this season hitting 263 for Kilgore. One walk, 13 strikeouts, has three runs batted in for the Rangers. Edwards without any extra base hits, according to the latest Region 14 statistics. You know, looking at the runners on base for Kilgore, Hope Hampton has one stolen base. She's at second for the Rangers. The other runner, Cortland Goodson, with a steal as well. And that one misses. Two balls, two strikes now. Cardinals leading the Rangers three to nothing. Some more fans trickling into the ballpark this afternoon. Pitch misses outside to make the count full at three balls and two strikes to the left-handed hitting Trinity Edwards as Kilgore is down three to nothing. So here's the count, the pitch. There's a bouncer to be gloved at short and the underhanded toss over to third, more of a shovel pitch is in time for the out. That's a six to five put out for Trinity Valley, Menchaca over to Ashland Weiner. Well, the Rangers unable to score even though they had runners on base here in the second inning for Kilgore College, no runs. Rangers did end up with two walks, no base hits, but two walks, put the two runners on base, sacrificed Bunn as well, moved them over, but nothing doing for the Rangers. No runs, no hits, no Trinity Valley errors, and two runners left on base. So two innings are in the books from Tatum at Eagles Nest Park, and it's three to nothing. Trinity Valley with the lead over the Kilgore College Rangers. We will come back with more right after this. It's Kilgore College softball on the KC Sports Network. We're heading to the top of the third inning from Tatum. Kilgore trailing Trinity Valley three to nothing on the KC Sports Network as the first pitch will miss outside one and zero the count uh, for Trinity Valley. Up to bat to lead off the third inning. It is Destiny Menchaca at the shortstop. 
followed by Allison Garcia, the designated player, and Eliza Fields, the right fielder. And that one's going to be inside the bag, a third and a base hit. And rounding first, heading to second, it's going to be Kara Weidenhop, the first baseman. I was looking at the wrong part of the roster. That's Weidenhop with a double to lead it off down the left field line, just inside the bag of third to start the inning. So double by Weidenhop. She's leading off the inning for Trinity Valley, followed by Jaden Burnham, the catcher, then Menchaca, the shortstop. So a leadoff double, Kaylee Schmitz, allowing the first runner of this inning to get on base. Last time that happened on in the second inning, first runner reached on a walk, and two runs scored after that. And there's a strike call to Jaden Burnham, the catcher, hitting from the right-hand side. So on one, the count to Burnham, who's showing bunt, pulls it back, pitch misses high, moving on over to third, and this time they're going to get the runner out. The ball was bobbled by Hampton as it popped out of her glove on the pitch that went outside, but Hampton doing a great job of recovering quickly. By then, Wiedenhop was on the run, and she was caught at third base. The throw to McClellan and the tag by McClellan. So Wiedenhop is caught on a stealing attempt. Two to five. So there's your first out of the inning as the Rangers protect the base path, and that pitch rolled through the legs of Hampton. Two balls and a strike now. Good thing that Wiedenhop wasn't on base. She would have had a chance to score. So Burnham with the count against her, or with her, in her favor, at two balls on a strike with one down in the top of the third inning. Burnham pulls back from the bunt, swinging and a miss, and that'll even the count at two balls and two strikes. So good job by Hampton to recover the ball. Rangers in a tough time, losing 17 games in a row. Again, 2-32 and 32 overall, winless in conference play, fouled back by Burnham. And so the Rangers on neutral sites this season at 1-1. One and one. This is a home game for Kilgore College, but with the condition of the ballpark at KC Commons after all the rain we've had, the game was moved to where the Lady Eagles of Tatum play at the Eagles Nest Ballpark. Burnham again shows Bunt with the count at two and two. Here's the wind and the delivery, and there's a swing and a miss on the off-speed pitch. The ball is dropped. Hampton throws it over to Schubin at first, and Burnham is K'd. Four strikeouts now for Schmitz. Two outs in the inning for Destiny Menchaca, the shortstop for Trinity Valley. So the Rangers are hoping that a neutral site, where they're even at 500, might do them some good. Here's the wind and the delivery to Menchaca. Off-speed pitch just missing. 1-0 and the count. Menchaca has been hit by pitches twice this season. Not afraid to take one for the team with three sacrifice flies. Menchaca with four home runs. Has 13 doubles and one triple this year. So the sophomore transfer able to bang the ball around the park well. 346 hitter is Menchaca this season. 2 0 is the count. Here's the wind in the delivery, and that one's going to be fouled out of play. Count is now two balls and a strike to Menchaca. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast today on the Kilgore College Sports Network. Win has died down some. But you know, it's just cool enough if you're sitting in the shade here at the ballpark, just cool enough where. Some of the uh, student workers here for Kilgore College with the softball program have their hoodies on, and that one will go all the way to the wall into the gap between right center field. Bouncing off the wall and making the retrieval, it's Klimzak, but by the time she gets it in, Menchaca has a double. So there's a double by Menchaca, able to get it in between the gap of center and right, all the way to the wall. So two down and a double by Menchaca brings up Allison Garcia, the designated player. Had a single, subsequently scored via an error. Here's the wind and the delivery. Yeah, that's going to be a ball. Yeah. 
Here's the next delivery, and that one's going to be low, bouncing into the catcher's glove. And the count is at 2 and 0. Oh. Here's the delivery, and that one will miss low and inside, and the count is at 3 and 0 oh now. Garcia scoring in the second inning on a sacrifice fly by Ashlyn Weiner, giving Weiner the RBI. The other run that Menchaca scored was via the error. 3-0 the count, and that's going to be a bouncer. Lamb, it goes underneath her glove and into center field for the base hit. Rounding third and coming home to score is Menchaca. And Trinity Valley has a 4-0 lead now over Kilgore. So with two outs, Menchaca able to secure the double. And then subsequently scoring, Allison Garcia with an RBI single for Trinity Valley. So 4 nothing, the Cardinals on top, and here's Eliza Fields, the right fielder. She was able to get on via a throwing error off of a bunt back in the second inning, and that's going to be a bouncer that goes to Lamb at second. Easy toss to first, and that will retire the side on the 4-3 to three put out. So Fields goes down, and that ends the inning, but Trinity Valley a little bit more damage. One more run for the Cardinals here in the fourth inning, and the Cardinals do it on three base hits. No Kilgore errors and one runner left on base. We have played two and a half innings from the ballpark at KC Commons into the top of the third, hitting to the bottom of the third. It's Trinity Valley four and Kilgore College nothing. More after this on the KC Sports Network. We're heading to the bottom of the third inning from Eagles Nest Ballpark in Tatum. And Kilgore College trails Trinity Valley 4 to nothing. The Rangers need to try to solve Nicole Stir. Get some offense going here. And that's going to be a shot in a center field. DeBose will make the squeeze. And that's one down. Cornelson leading off the third inning for the Rangers with a fly out to center field. Briley is now 0 for 2. And here's Haley Lamb. The second baseman grounded out unassisted to first back in the first inning. Lamb, a right-handed hitter for Kilgore. Here's the delivery by Stir, And that goes into the ground and bounces away. Again, with this sports turf surface, you probably get more bounces on pitches that get into the ground. Catchers will need to be a bit more aware. Want to know the count to Haley Lamb. Lamb hitting 135 for the Rangers this year. A couple of RBIs for her this season as she fouls it off the windscreen, making the count even at one and one. Deja Montgomery coaching at first for Kilgore. Amber Williams, the head coach, is at third. Ashley Nipper in the dugout for the Rangers. Here's the wind and the delivery, and that's going to be... Uh, Pop foul, it'll go off the backstop again, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes now to Haley Lamb. One out in the bottom of the third inning. Here's the delivery, missing high. That'll make the count at two and two. Lamb has one extra base hit on the year, a double for Kilgore. Here's the wind and the delivery. And a swing and a miss by Lamb. And that'll be out number two as Lamb is Cade. That is the first strikeout for Nicole Stur. She's been able to get flyouts, ground outs. Able to get the job done without fanning anybody. Except for there, striking out Lamb. Two down for Haley Shubin, the number three hitter in the order. 
That pitch goes sky high, 1-0 the count to Shubin. Shubin with the only hit of the ball game for the Rangers, a single in the first inning. Here's the next delivery on the 1-0 count, and that'll be a 2-0 count now. That one is inside and low to Haley Shubin. Shubin will take one for the team. She's done it three times this year, hit by pitch three times for the Rangers. Here's the delivery to Haley. That one is going to miss low as well. The count goes to 3 0 to Schumann. Schumann this year has a couple of doubles and one triple for the Rangers. Here's the pitch on the way. And that one misses ball four. So on four pitches, Schumann with a good eye draws a walk. So she is on base for the second time this afternoon. Two down with a runner at first for Kilgore, and here's Alyssa McClellan, the third baseman. McClellan has one home run this season for the Rangers. Here's the delivery to her, and that'll be a strike, so Stewart gets back on track. 0-1, McClellan hitting 171 for the Rangers. Drawn nine walks this year, striking out 12 times. Has four RBIs on the campaign. She's going to sky this one up into short center. And that'll be an out as a second baseman for Trinity Valley. Addison Whitram is able to trot on out a little bit and make the play to retire the side. So the Rangers again come up dry. No runs for Kilgore. No hits. No errors. And one left on base due to a walk. So we have played... Four, make it three complete innings as we head to the fourth inning from Eagles Nest Ballpark. And it's Trinity Valley four and Kilgore College nothing. We'll take this break. You are listening and watching Kilgore College softball on the KC Sports Network. To the top of the fourth inning we go from the ballpark at Eagles Nest Ballpark, I should say, here in Tatum. Almost at the ballpark at Casey Commons. Now that's where the game should have been played yesterday, but due to the abundance of rain we had for three days in a row, field is washed out, and here we are in Tatum. For this game, Trinity Valley and Kilgore, doubleheader, Region 14 style, today in Tatum. And the next pitch is going to be a bunt foul by Allison Weiner, the third baseman who is leading off the fourth inning for Trinity Valley. Weiner, the number nine hitter, followed by the top of the order, Mariah Dubose, and then Crystal and Castaneda, as Trinity Valley has a four to nothing advantage. Oh, and two the count. Here's the pitch. That one missing high. The count goes to one and two. So Ashlyn Weiner, the third baseman for TVCC. Weiner, a 256 hitter for the Cardinals. 17 runs batted in on the year. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's going to be a foul, and the count will hold at a ball and two strikes. Weiner with 21 hits on the year. She's walked 14 times and equally striking out 14 times. Weiner with four doubles. She also has one triple and a couple of home runs. And a swing and a miss there by Weiner. And there's the first out of the inning. Kaylee Schmitz with five strikeouts into the contest today. So good outing for her, but needs some support from the Rangers offensively. So Weinert goes down on strikes, and Mariah DeBose, the center fielder, at the top of the order. Mariah, a 400 hitter 
for Trinity Valley this season. She will pop this one up in her center field that's trailing toward the ball, and it is just over the glove of Klimzak, and Weinert with good speed, excuse me, DeBose with good speed, ends up with a triple. Mariah DeBose, as the ball carried, Wynn might have gave it a little bit of help, went over the glove of Weinert, who made a great attempt up against the fence, and by the time she's able to secure it, DeBose is on her way to third. So one down and a stand-up triple by DeBose. Actually, she did slide into third. But anyway, you have a triple by DeBose and Crystal Ann Castaneda, the left fielder, coming up. Castaneda with a walk in the first inning, subsequently scored. And there's going to be a strike to Castaneda. Castaneda striking out in the second inning. And that's going to be a bouncer foul off the backstop. Count goes to 0-2. Castaneda walked and then was able to get to third base on a wild pitch following a Whitram single. And then she scored on Wiedenhoff's ground out 4-3. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And Castaneda goes down on strikes. And wow. Out of the three batters that Schmitz has faced, she struck out two, but you have DeBose sitting at third with two down, and Addison Whitram, the second baseman, coming to the plate. So Schmitz looking to be able to work out of this bit of trouble and hold the Cardinals scoreless. So far through the first three innings, Trinity Valley has scored in every inning. One in the first, two in the second, one in the third. Here's the delivery. And one missing high in the count is 1-0. and oh. So Whitram. This season, 482, she is at the top of the hitting charts, average-wise, for Trinity Valley. Here's the next pitch to Addison. That one's going to bounce on the plate. Nice block by Hampton, and the count will be at two balls and no strikes. Whitram, 53 runs batted in this year. She has 68 hits, so she knows how to get the runners across the plate. You have one to third right now with two down. Here's the delivery. And that one will go between the legs of Hampton, and that will allow DeBose with her speed to score. Wild pitch charge to Smits. It's the second one of the ball game, and this allows a run to come in. That'll be an unearned run as DeBose scores, and the score now is 5 to nothing. Trinity Valley over to Kilgore with two down. And Whitram at the plate with a count of two balls and one strike. So that's something that uh, certainly has been part of Kilgore's problems in this ball game not being able to shut down the Trinity Valley offense and a little bit of extra help. So we've had two wild pitches and then also an error and an error in the second inning did figure into a run. Here's the delivery. And that's going to be a pop-up into left field by Whitram. And the catch is made. The side is retired as Cortland Goodson makes the grab. So Whitram flies out to left and that ends the inning. But once again, the Cardinals are able to get on the scoreboard thanks to a triple and a wild pitch. One run for Trinity Valley. Cardinals do it on one base hit. No Kilgore errors and nobody left on base. So we have played three and a half innings from Tatum. And it's Trinity Valley five, Kilgore College nothing. We'll come back with more right after this break. Kilgore College softball on the KC Sports Network. Hope Hampton will come to the plate to lead it off for the Rangers as we are going to the bottom of the fourth inning with Trinity Valley on top, five to nothing over Kilgore. Hampton, Galvan, and Goodson, the batting order for the Rangers. That is five, six, and seven. First pitch swing, and Hampton will get this one in the right field, but it's an easy grab made as staying pretty stationary allies the fields for out number one.
Hampton officially 0 for 1 in the game. She did draw a walk back in the second inning to get on base. Here's Coletta Galvan, the designated player. Galvan with a sacrifice bunt to move Hampton over to second back in the second inning. 1 and 0 the count as that pitch misses. Nicole Stur remains in the circle, and why not? It's a one hit shutout for Stur. Here's the pitch to Galvan, and there comes a strike. And that'll make the count even at a ball and a strike. Kilgore losing a twin bill on Saturday to Paris Junior College. 9 to nothing in the first game, 10 to 5 in the second. Better output in the second game offensively. But Paris with a, is a very good hitting team. And they're able to make their uh, comeback as Kilgore did have a lead. In the contest, Paris able to get the victory over Kilgore College. Trinity Valley has won four of its last six ball games. Galvan grounds it to second, and it's booted. Galvan will make it over to first, and error will be charged to the Trinity Valley second baseman, Addison Whitram. Uh, she didn't get her glove low enough, and it bounced off her foot. Should have been an easy chance, unable to make it, and that will put Galvan at first base via the error, the E4 on Whitram. So the Rangers with a gift runner at first now for Cortland Goodson, the left fielder, who walked her first time up back in the second inning. Goodson will foul this one out of play, and then make the count no balls and one strike. Trinity Valley on Saturday split a doubleheader with Tyler Junior College. 8-3 to three, the win in the first game, but in the nightcap, the Apaches took a 7-3 win. Here's the next delivery, and that one is going to be a strike call, catching the outside part of the plate to make it 0-2. Trinity Valley swept Tyler on March the 29th. Both games scores of 11 to 3 victories in the column for the Cardinals. And then they split their last two double headers. And that one be a foul right to the Kilgore College dugout. Count remains at no balls and two strikes. The Cardinals are 10 and, nine, 10 and 9 away from home and 7 and 0 at neutral sites this year. Here's the pitch on the way, and that one will miss. And then I'll make the count one ball and two strikes. And we've documented how things have been kind of tough for Kilgore. They're playing Trinity Valley, the number 18 team in the nation this week today. On Saturday, the number 20 team, the Cavaliers of Bossier Parish, will come to Kilgore. There's a swing and a miss by Goodson. And that'll be a strikeout, second strikeout recorded by Stur. So two down now with a runner at first, Coletta Galvan for Corn Klimzak, the center fielder. Here's the delivery, and that's going to be a foul back by Klimzak. And then adding to the tough schedule Kilgore faces when they played Paris on Saturday. Paris at that time was the number eight team in the country. Paris this week is at number nine in the nation with a 35-7 and seven overall record. And those teams that I mentioned... Paris at number nine, Trinity Valley at number 18, Bossier Parish at number 20, not only on the Rangers' schedule, but all three in the North Division. Galveston College out of the Eastern Division or the Southern Division is number 13 in the country. San Jacinto is in the others receiving votes category. Klimzak with a pop-up, and which one will make the squeeze right at the edge of the infield, and that will retire the side as Klimzak pops out to second to end the frame. No runs for the Rangers in the fourth inning, no base hits. The Rangers did get Galvan on via an error, and they left her stranded on base. So we have played four innings from Tatum. It's the Cardinals five and the Rangers nothing. We'll go ahead and take this break. Kilgore College Softball on the KC Sports Network.
And we start out the top of the fifth inning with a home run for Trinity Valley Community College. The Cardinals with the first dinger of the ball game now have a 6 and nothing lead. Solo shot for Kiara Wiedenhaupt, the first baseman who leads off the inning for TVCC. And she smacks it out of the park. First pitch, solo shot, center field. And Trinity Valley leads it by a score of 6 to nothing. So Wiedenhaupt is able to get herself home on the solo shot straight center field. And right away, the Rangers trail now six to nothing. Starter Kaylee Schmitz, who has been hanging tough, even though there's been adversity with five strikeouts. And then Wiedenhop comes in and greets her in the top of the fifth with a solo home run. Jaden Burnham, the catcher now up to bat for Trinity Valley. And actually, we have a pinch hitter in for Burnham. In for Burnham is Arabella Garcia. Arabella Garcia wearing number 28. Pinch hitting for the catcher, Jaden Burnham. At first pitch, misses wide. The count at 1-0. and oh. So Arabella Garcia... Right-handed hitter for the first at-bat of the ball game. Pitch missing outside, making it 2 and 0. Oh. Garcia waiting on the delivery by Schmitz, missing outside, and that'll make it now a count of three balls and no strikes. Burnham, prior to being pinch hit for Garcia, had struck out twice. So in this fifth inning, Coach Maria Wynn Ratliff elects to go with a pinch hitter. There's a strike across the plate, making the count at three balls and one strike. Six nothing lead for Trinity Valley. Here's the delivery into the ground, ball four, and Garcia draws the walk. So facing two batters, things have gotten a little bit tough now for Schmitz. And a circle visit by Hampton and McClellan to try to get Schmitz's mind right. In the meantime, Destiny Menchaca, the shortstop, will come to the plate. Reached on a walk in the second inning, subsequently scored on an error, and then had a double and subsequently scored in the third inning. Scored on a single by Allison Garcia. Runner at first with nobody out. A solo shot by Kiara Wheatenhop to start the inning, and Trinity Valley has a 6 to nothing lead over Kilgore College. So Bachaka gets back into the box, hitting for the right-hand side, and she grounds this one into the gap and into left field for the base hit. So Garcia... The pinch hitter gets to second base. Menchaca's at first base with a single. And here is Allison Garcia, the designated player. Things starting to unravel a little bit for the Rangers now. Allison Garcia, a 317 hitter for Trinity Valley Community College. Our six runs batted in and has a runner in scoring position. That first pitch will miss the count at 1-0 and oh as the wind kicks up a little bit more now here at the Eagle's Nest. Here's the pitch, and that one's going to be a strike call. Nice off-speed pitch by Kaylee Schmitz to make the count even at one ball and one strike. Kaylee Schmitz from Royce City, Texas, a sophomore for the Rangers. Here's the delivery, and that one will miss low, making the count two balls and a strike. As the wind gets a little bit more active here this afternoon. Allison Garcia from Corpus Christi, Texas, a redshirt freshman, will pop this one and it'll go foul. First base side got into the outfield area. The count is at two balls and two strikes. Schmitz gets back to the circle now. Even count for Allison Garcia. 
Garcia with two singles in the game, scored a run in the second inning and had an RBI single in the third. Trying to get another one here. She'll bounce it foul third base side. Count holes at two balls and two strikes. This is game one of a doubleheader today. Game number two will come up 20 to 30 minutes after game number one ends. Scheduled first pitch time is at 2 o'clock. Right now we're nearing the 1 o'clock hour. This game started before 12, about 11.50. Here's the pitch on the way, and that one will miss outside, putting the count full at three balls and two strikes with Arabella Garcia at second and Destiny Menchaca at first. Here's the delivery on the way. Missing high, ball four, and the bases are loaded with Cardinals. You have Garcia's at the corners. Arabella, she's from Odin, Texas. She is at third baseman. Chuck at second, then Allison Garcia is at first on that walk. Up to bat, Eliza Fields, the right fielder. She reached on an error back in the second inning and a ground out in the third inning. Here's the delivery. And that one will miss wide. One another count to Fields. Here's the delivery, and that one's going to be a foul out of play. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Fields hitting 358 for Trinity Valley, 13 RBI. She's walked 12 times and struck out 14. 38 hits on the season for Fields. Here's the delivery by Schmitz. That one is going to miss high and outside. Two balls and one strike now. Cardinals trying to bust things open here in game one of the doubleheader. Schmitz eyeing, Schmitz firing, missing outside. Count goes to three balls and a strike. These two teams did meet in March on the 12th of March. That was spring break time as that one has popped up. In the short right center, Haley Lamb drops the ball. One run will score. The other runners will advance. And Trinity Valley now leads it 7 to nothing, And that will be an error charge to Haley Lamb. Arabella Garcia, the pinch runner, scores from third base. Two runs in now for Trinity Valley. Menchaca moves over to third. Garcia, Allison Garcia is at second. Fields at first on the error. And now Ashlyn Weiner at the third baseman comes up to bat. And that pitch will miss outside as he shows bunt. 1-0 the count. Tough going for the Rangers in game one of this doubleheader. Down 7 and nothing. So back on the 12th, there was a tough road to hoe for the Rangers as well as Weiner. Gets this one in front of Trinity Edwards for a base hit into right field. Just landed in front of her. Did a great job of scooping and throwing it in. But Destiny Menchaca able to come home and score for Trinity Valley. And that makes it 8 to nothing. And Ashlyn Weiner comes up with an RBI single for TVCC. Fields, even though she reached base on an error, will get credited for an RBI with Garcia scoring. Three runs in for the Cardinals now. And that is going to be it for Kaylee Schmitz. So Schmitz with a tough going here, allowing three runs in the fifth inning, will now yield the circle to another Kilgore College pitcher. And stepping into the circle for Kilgore will be number 21, Olivia Gilzow. So Gills now, now into the ball game for Kilgore College as we have a pitching change. Weinert was a number nine hitter, so when Trinity Valley gets the bat, it will be the leadoff hitter, and that will be DeBose. So 8 nothing lead now for Trinity Valley. And Schmitz gives up the eight runs for Kilgore College.
and the runners on base are to her charge. In this inning, Whedon Hop led off with a solo home run. Arabella Garcia walked. Disney Manchaca single, putting runners on first and second. Allison Garcia walked, making it bases loaded. And then Eliza Fields hit a popped up that Haley Lamb dropped. That gives Fields an RBI. She reached on the error. And then Allison Weinert with an RBI single. Whedon Hop, Garcia, and Manchaca have scored for Trinity Valley. Eight nothing lead for TBCC as Olivia Gilzow. Her first pitch is a swing and a miss. Throw over to second, and that will end up going into center field. Run scores as Allison Garcia comes home to score, and it's now nine to nothing Trinity Valley. It is one strike to Mariah Debose, who's at the plate now for TBCC. Here's the pitch, and that one misses. One and one is the count. Delivery, and that'll be a bouncer, and that'll go foul. One ball and two strikes. Four runs in now for the Cardinals. Weinert is at third. Here's the delivery. And that one misses. Almost bounces away from Hampton, but she recovers it. So Weiner at third. Bose hitting from the left hand side. Here's the pitch. And that one misses high, making the count at three balls and two strikes with one down. Minor at third. That's going to be a bouncer right at Gilzow over to first for one. Relay home, and the runner is safe. Weinert scores. So DeBose will go down one to three. She'll get credit for a sacrifice and an RBI. Crystal Castaneda, the left fielder, will come to bat for Trinity Valley with what is two down now. That's going to be a strike to Castaneda. Trinity Valley up 10 0. Five runs in this inning. Here's the wind and the delivery. And that off speed pitch will be a strike. And right away, Gills has a hit in the count at no balls and two strikes. Owen to the count. Here's the delivery, and that's going to be a bouncer foul. Trickles back on the field after bouncing off the wall. And the count remains at no balls and two strikes to Mariah DeBose, rather to Crystal Castaneda. Here's the wind and the delivery. That one misses. One ball and two strikes. Pop up by Castaneda, and that one ends up going out of play. So the count holds it a ball and two strikes. 
Trinity Valley 10 and Kilgore College nothing. And the two teams met on the 12th. Trinity Valley won the first game 16 to nothing in five innings and then took the nightcap from Kilgore 5 to nothing. The Rangers coming up dry offensively in that doubleheader back in March. Two and two of the count with two down. Castaneda, she struck out twice and also walked. That was back in the first inning. Subsequently scored in that first inning. She'll bounce this one to short. Cornelson with a toss over to first. And that one is not in time as Castaneda is able to beat it out. Infield single for Crystal Castaneda with two down. And Addison Whitram, the second baseman, is the ninth player to the plate. So the Cardinals have batted around in this fifth inning. Two outs and a runner at first. Here's a pitch by Gilzow. And Olivia just misses that one. Gilzow did appear in the doubleheader in relief of Schmitz in game number one of the doubleheader against Paris on Saturday. Pitched in, inning in a third in that contest. High pitch, throw to second, and Castaneda is able to get in with the steal. Here's the delivery. That one misses high. Three balls and no strikes. And there is a strike to make it three and one now. On deck is Kara Wiedenhoff, who started out the inning with a solo home run for Trinity Rally. It's been a big fifth inning for the Cardinals. Here's the wind and the delivery by Olivia Gilzow, missing high ball four. And now with two down, there's runners at first and second for Trinity Valley. And Wiedenhoff, who led it off with a solo shot, is back up to bat. Wiedenhop is two for three today. She has two RBIs. Caught stealing back in the second inning. She has a double in addition to her home run. Here's the pitch on the way, and that one's into the ground. Bounces from Hampton. She's able to block it, but the runners will advance. And that'll be a wild pitch as that one went into the ground. Castaneda is to third, and Wittram is to second. And Hampton will have a talk with Gilzow. Ryan Hampton with a question for the umpire. And now we'll get back to work here. 1-0 is the count to the hitter, Kiara Wiedenhaupt. Here's the delivery, and that one went outside 2-0. Oh. Olivia Gilzow, right-handed pitcher for the Kilgore Rangers. Hailing from Chester, Texas, along with her sister, Audrey Gilzow. That's going to be fouled off the backstop. Audrey listed as the third baseman, Olivia as the pitcher, both sophomores. We've seen Audrey pitch before for Kilgore in her time as a Ranger. So here's the pitch. That's going to be fouled off the backstop. Two and two is the count to Kiara Wiedenhaupt. Whedon hopped on the season, hitting 454 for Trinity Valley Community College. And she's going to pop this one up into left field and hangs in the air, and Goodson's able to make the play. And that will retire the side on the fly out to 
right field. But it was a busy inning for Trinity Valley as the Cardinals scored five runs in the inning. Trinity Valley ended up getting the five runs on four base hits. Kilgore College committed two errors in the frame, and the Cardinals stranded two runners on base. Five runs, four hits, two errors, two left on base. Four and a half innings in the books from Tatum. Kilgore trailing 10 to nothing to Trinity Valley. We'll come back right after this on the Kilgore College Sports Network. All right, we were able to get a clarification on an out back in the fifth inning as Eliza Fields, who was going to second base as the ball went into the outfield. She went to second base. The ball was in the outfield, but then they were able to throw the back in, the ball back in. So it ended up being a nice play for Rangers center fielder Corin Klimzak as the ball sailed over the head of the Kilgore shortstop, Cornelson, trying to get Fields out going to second. The ball sailed over the head of Cornelson. Klimzak picked it up and got it back to second, and they were able to get Fields off the bag. And so Fields was essentially forced out 8-6 to six as the Rangers tried to get to her. So even though all the ball went into the outfield, the out was made. So we'll take one Kilgore error away. So that was five runs, four hits, one error, and two left on base. So that's how the Rangers did get the first out of the inning. Wanted to make a clarification on that. So that's why Fields was no longer on the base path. And again, my apologies for that. I went over and talked to the person who was running the scoreboard today, and he said that the umpire had actually told him that's what had happened. And so my apologies for that, but we were able to get that out recorded. So Fields was forced out for the first out. So again, wipe out one Kilgore error. The Rangers did commit another. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's going to be a bouncer to short on over to first, and that is not in time. And the speedy Trinity Edwards for Kilgore College leads off the bottom of the fifth inning with an infield single. Menchaca tried to get it over to first to Whedon Hout, but just not in time as Trinity Edwards with extreme speed. Are they going to say she's out? Sure enough, they're going to say she's out. I thought they could call her safe at first. They called her out just in time. Wow. So found back by the leadoff hitter, Cornelson. So Edwards does end up going down 6-3. to three. I thought for sure that she was safe. Now, actually, I thought that's what the call was made. Edwards thought so, too. She hung around first for a minute. Cornelson will pop this up in foul territory, and right before the railing, before the dugout, the catch is made by Whedon Hop for out number two. So the pop-up to first by Cornelson. There's a railing that's in front of the first base dugout. And right before crashing into that, she was able to make the catch for the out. Here is Haley Lamb, the second baseman for Kilgore. Two up, two down for the Rangers in the bottom of the fifth. With Trinity Valley leading 10 to nothing, this is it for the Rangers. Lamb could be the last batter for Kilgore. It's an eight-run rule after five innings. Here's the pitch, and that's going to be fouled out of play. The Cardinals have a new pitcher in the lineup, Miranda Pena. Number 21 is now in the circle for Trinity Valley. And this one is going to be a pop-up foul off the backstop. So 
So Pena coming in in the fifth inning in relief of Stur. Stur pitching a shutout through the first four innings, allowing just one Kilgore hit. And that's going to be a strike three, and that will end the ball game. A swing and a miss by Haley Lamb, and the side is retired. And that will do it for game number one of this doubleheader. Nothing across for the Kilgore College Rangers in the bottom of the fifth inning. A ground out by Edwards. We thought it was a single. It was not. And then also Cornelson with a pop out and Lamb with a strikeout. And that retires the side. Nothing across for the Rangers in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the final score in game number one of our Region 14 doubleheader, Trinity Valley Community College 10 and Kilgore College nothing. So the Cardinals able to get the win. And bounce back from the doubleheader split, the loss in game number two on Saturday to Tyler Junior College. Trinity Valley now is at 32 and 13 overall and 12 and 3 in Region 14 conference play. And for the Rangers, the woes continue. The winning streak now pops up to 18 for Kilgore College. 0 and 15 in conference play and 2 and 33 overall. Final score in game number one of the doubleheader, Trinity Valley 10 and Kilgore nothing. We'll come back with our post-game wrap-up in just a moment as we total up the numbers on the Kilgore College Sports Network.
And thank you for being with us and being patient with us as we added up the totals, heading to our Rangers softball postgame show on the Kilgore College Sports Network. Final score in game number one of the Region 14 Twin Bill, Trinity Valley Community College 10, and Kilgore College nothing. Here's the totals to win it for Trinity Valley Community College 10 runs on 11 hits for TVCC. The Cardinals committed one error and stranding six runners on base. For the Kilgore College Rangers, no runs, one hit. The Rangers with two errors and four left on base. And the winning pitcher for Trinity Valley is Nicole Sturr. She now improves her record to 12 wins and eight losses on the season. And Kaylee Schmidt takes her second loss in a row for Kilgore College. as She lost the first game of the doubleheader on Saturday to Paris Junior College. Here are the uh, pitching totals for Trinity Valley. For the winning pitcher, Sturr, she pitched four innings, gave up one hit, no runs. Subsequently, no earned runs. She walked three and struck out two. And then in the fifth inning, coming in in relief, it was Miranda Pena. Pena, one inning of nothing across, three up and three down for the Rangers, and one strikeout included in that. Schmitz, in taking the loss, pitched four and a third innings, gave up 10 hits, 10 runs. Four of those runs were earned. She walked five, struck out six, and had two wild pitches. And Olivia Gilzow came in in relief. She ended up pitching two-thirds of an inning for Kilgore College. Gilzow giving up one hit, no runs, and walking one in that relief stint to close out the fifth inning of play. Taking a look at some of the offensive numbers in the ballgame, Trinity Valley's Mariah DeBose ended up with one single and a triple. So in the contest, she was two for four in the game. And she ended up with, of course, an RBI and a sacrifice. She scored two runs as well and had a stolen base. Crystal Castaneda scored a run back in the first inning. She reached on a walk, also a single, and had a stolen base as well. So in the contest, she ended up officially one for three. Also for Trinity Valley, Kara Weidenhoff, she had two RBIs in the ball game, a ground out RBI back in the first inning, and then the solo home run to lead off that big fifth inning in which Trinity Valley scored five runs to put the game away. Weidenhoff finished two for three in the contest, also had a double in the third inning. Additionally for Trinity Valley, Destiny Menchaca, Ended up scoring three runs in the ball game. She reached on an error. She reached on a walk back in the second inning. Subsequently scored on an error. Had a double and a run scored in the third. A single and a run scored in the fifth inning. Allison Garcia ended up two for two today. She reached base three times. Two singles and a walk. Also scored two runs and had an RBI. Eliza Fields ended up with an RBI in the contest. She reached on errors twice in the ball game, but she was tossed out. After an overthrow when she went to second, as she tried to get back to the bag, a nice throw in by Klimzak to Cornelson to tag her out. And then Ashlyn Weinert ended up with two RBIs today, one on a sacrifice fly and one on a single. She was one for three today. Offensively for Kilgore College, one hit recorded by Haley Shubin. That was back in the first inning. Shubin also walked in the third, so she reached base twice in the contest. Hope Hampton, the catcher, she reached on a walk back in the second inning. Coletta Galvan reaching on an error in the fourth inning. But a tough go of it for the Rangers, just scratching out one hit in the contest this afternoon. So that wraps up our coverage of game one of our Region 14 doubleheader from Eagles Nest Ballpark in Tatum, Texas. The final score in game number one of our twin bill, Trinity Valley Community College 10 and Kilgore College nothing. We'll take this break in the broadcast to get ourselves ready for game two of our doubleheader. We expect game two, the projected start time or the scheduled start time is at two o'clock. We expect the start time for that contest to be about 145 or 150. So check in on our Kilgore College YouTube channel and you'll be up to date on when game number two of the doubleheader starts. Well, once again, the final score in game one, it was Trinity Valley Community College 10 and Kilgore College nothing. We'll take this break in between games. This is Kilgore College Softball on the KC Sports Network. 